Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have the CEO of PhoneScope, Cheston Davis, on the line. Cheston, how you doing? I'm uh, doing great, Jay. How about yourself? Good. It's been fun watching your progress. You've had a pretty good fall of of hunting. Uh, I know as busy as you are at PhoneScope, uh, you've been able to sneak out on a few hunts as well. Uh, how, how's your fall shaping up so far? You know, Jay, yeah, it's been, it's been great. It, it was tough at the very beginning. It's just been so busy. Uh, but like you said, I, I snuck away for a couple of days, and it's all about making the days you can get away count. So up and early bright, and then uh, hunt all day and try to glass stuff up, go to bed, do it again. So, yeah, it's been successful but very busy. Yeah, I know uh, earlier that kind of at the beginning of, say, the archery deer and archery elk seasons, uh, phone scope now is uh, sold in Walmart, and I know you had big orders of Walmart that you were, uh, uh, you know, trying to get get all your crew to produce uh, all of the material and all of the phone scope adapters. Um, how has that been being in Walmart, and um, how big of a challenge for you as a business owner? Obviously, Walmart is a huge account, uh, but talk a little bit about how that's gone. You know, it was uh, it was very stressful and crazy to see the numbers that they they ordered on the first PO and then the second and the third. And so it's been very challenging, but we've we figured out a great system. I've got a great team in place, and it, we're truly blessed and grateful for the business that Walmart uh, provided us with us being able to expand jobs, to expand local revenue for the people that build our products here in Southern Utah. It's been uh, it's been a humbling and amazing experience, but also a learning curve, and something I'm definitely losing hair over uh, because it's it's definitely stressful dealing with the big box chains, and you know they they have to run smooth. You have to have everything taken care of, all the way from accepting the order, clear out to producing, testing, and then shipping it out in a timely manner. So it's been it's been definitely a learning curve, but it's been it's been a great learning curve as well because nothing better than furthering your knowledge and learning how to do different things. It's definitely tested all of our our uh, patience and knowledge and all the above. Yeah, for sure. Um, Cheston, let's back up for a second. Uh, I've had you on the podcast before, and, and the listeners that are that listen to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast obviously hear about PhoneScope all the time. Uh, but for those listeners that are uh, new uh, to this podcast and maybe hearing about PhoneScope for the first time, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, you know, I, I, I've already gone over the story how you started PhoneScope, but give me kind of the 30,000-foot view uh, for those new people uh, about PhoneScope and what what products you guys actually provide. Yeah, no problem. So our system is exactly what it sounds like. It pairs a phone up with a scope or an optical device. I mean, our stuff's used anywhere from binoculars to spotting scopes, telescopes, microscopes, uh, medical field. The stuff that would just totally blow you away. Um, it helps pair a cell phone up with an optical device. So now you're just taking a standard camera or a standard phone camera and being able to actually plug it up and give it a 10 power zoom or give it a 20 power zoom or a 60 power zoom. Being able to do some FaceTime live looking through your spotting scope and letting the whole world tune in and look at a deer you're looking at, an elk you're looking at, or even the moon. Uh, it's just a unique way of being able to attach your cell phone to be able to enhance your viewing. Uh, whatever you're viewing through your scope. So it's it's just a two-piece system as well. So you lock your phone into our case, you twist the adapter in. All of our stuff usually weighs in under three, four ounces. Virtually weighs nothing, all guaranteed for life. And it works pretty flawlessly. Uh, of course, that's a biased opinion, but it does work well. So It does work well. And, it, you know, what's been... Uh, Crazy from a third party, um, obviously PhoneScope has been a, a sponsor of the J. Scott Outdoors podcast, and I greatly appreciate that. Uh, but from a third party's point of view, uh, one, being a user of PhoneScope, I use it uh, for my 15 powers and for my spotting scope, uh, and, and that, that's what I, uh, you know, digiscope with, if you will. Um, it, it's been awesome to watch the how widespread and and how popular phone scope has become did you ever think that it would ever be as big as it is now um and and it seems like it 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 happened overnight the growth of the company um 
you know, you see phone scope now everywhere. I just curious if you could speak to that. You know, no, we never thought it would get to our set right now. Um, we was basically solving a problem for us and a lot of the local people around here because we've all been subject to trying to hold our phone up and not being able to hold it steady. This and that. So it was more or less a, hey, let's make a little bit of side cash, you know. And uh, it went from being uh, father-son after we all got off work type of product to where it's at now. Um, a fairly known product, but yet we still haven't even touched the iceberg. We're doing we're doing a lot with the uh, we're doing a lot with the whitetail industry right now. Uh, people sitting in tree stands, sitting in blinds, when the deer and shoot with your bow, and you're trying to zoom your phone in. Well, now we're pairing our adapters up with their spotting or with their binoculars and letting them take amazing quality pictures at 100 to 150 yards out. So it definitely spreads from just being right here in the West, pretty much world around. We've got distributors set up on a lot of different continents. And it's uh, definitely rocking and rolling. Would you say too, I mean, with the with the cell phones across the board, with the cameras on board on the on the cell phones themselves, with them getting better and better, uh that just that just falls right into your lap for uh you know, your adapter to be more widespread. Meaning if, if the cameras weren't as good as they are, uh the, the, the phone scope wouldn't be as popular as it is. Speak to some of the new cameras and, and what you've seen as far as technologies and, and how that has helped your product to even uh, shine. Yeah, camera advancement in cell phones is definitely helping us out. It's also given us a headache. The new iPhone 7 Plus got dual cameras. It's been, a, it's been a juggle and a struggle for us trying to figure out exactly how to fine-tune it and make it work. But with what we figured out now, we've got a new software app developed um, we're working on that'll let you switch between cameras. So switch between a wide angle lens and a and the narrow uh telephoto lens. Uh, which right now the iPhone seven acts by itself and so it, it'll want to keep switching uh between the two cameras. So if we've got it hooked up here on the wide angle lens and it wants to switch over to the telephoto lens, your screen's gonna go black. So we've created a new case that lets you switch between the two lenses. It's got a sliding adapter. And then we've also got an app that's going to let you be able to go through and fine-tune between which camera lens you want to use. And the telephoto lens that Apple just came out with is a breakthrough technology. It's going to be amazing. It's going to take your standard phone, which I'm going to talk in SLR lens type of size, which Jay, you'll relate to. But right now, if you're using a Swarovski 70 power, it's equivalent to about a 1,900, 2,000-millimeter lens, which is a, it's a big zoom. That's a big lens. Uh, you throw this new iPhone 7 Plus on there, you use a telephoto lens, which is literally two times. So we're now almost shooting at a 4,000 millimeter lens. We can shoot in RAW, RAW format, as well as 4K. This new iPhone 7 Plus could be a game changer um, for digiscoping. It could be the new ultimate setup amongst all other SLR cameras that have sparring scopes. Uh, the Samsung S7 also, as well, has got an amazing camera. Um, it's probably got, until the iPhone 7 Plus came out, it was hand down the best one on the market. Uh, but a lot of people are still iPhone fans, and if so, the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus are great phones as well. But amongst the three phones out there that are the top, I definitely say you're looking at the iPhone 7, 7 Plus, or the Samsung S7. You know, one of the things when I was in Beaver there for my elk hunt, I was able to come by the headquarters there and talk with you and um, some of your employees. And, you know, it, from from a third party perspective and, 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 you know, not being there, I don't realize that every mold that you guys have to make, you know, cost, hundred, you know, could, could be in the, the six figures uh, to, to get that, you know, perfected. Um, talk a little bit about the challenge that you have to keep up with technology, uh, you know, and, and, and you guys have to spend quite a bit of money to, to make sure that it's perfect. Yeah, you know, we've got, uh, we've got two, pretty much two full-time engineers working on all the new stuff, the new advancements. Um, everything's a game of literally thousands of inches, so we've got to make sure things fine-tuned and dead up much. Uh, and when we take pride, we keep all this right here in the U.S. It's all built and manufactured right here in southern Utah. We don't outsource any of our molds to China. 
We don't outsource any of our plastic injected to China. We build it all right here in southern Utah. And we take major pride in being able to help build the community with, you know, the times are great right now. They're not terrible, but they're not the best they could be. But any time that we can help out and provide jobs and provide people the opportunity to work, that's kind of what we're all about. Being, I was in local government my whole life. We kind of talked about that, but it, it was brainwashed in my head that it's very important to take care of your local surroundings because one one day sooner or later you're going to need those people or they're going to need you. And it's all about being there for one another. So, yes, you're correct. We, we do have a lot of money in mold, and the problem is once the phone dies, that mold's out the door. Um, so, yes, people sometimes will get our product and be looking at it like, well, this, God, this is probably $5 worth of plastic. They don't realize how much money actually goes in to develop, design, and produce something that's going to work perfectly because vignetting is an evil. It's a, it's a devil for all of us. We all hate vignetting. And it's critical and crucial that we figure out how to eliminate that. So we spent a lot of time. We throw a lot of stuff in the trash because it didn't work the first time. Um, but the nice thing about building stuff here in America is we can do that. We can switch molds out. We can go ahead and change them up a little teeny bit. And fine tune them and get them right back to what it needs to be so we can produce a high quality image the very first time since we on their phone. For sure. How many different variations? Um, you know, when I was at the factory there, it, you know, one whole wall was literally bins full of phone scope adapters. And I mean, it looked like hundreds of variations. What, what would you say? You know, right now I would say we probably service over 70 plus phones. Um, wow. And we probably, as far as optics, we service, oh man, thousands because we, we actually have our own custom machine shop right there in the back of the warehouse. I'm not sure if you went back that far. Um, but So we'll take blanks, which are produced in St. George, bring them up here, and then when somebody orders a customer over the Internet, we'll have that custom machine to ship in 24 hours. So we physically touch a lot of this stuff and put a lot of labor ourselves right in our own house uh, to be able to produce the products people are requesting. If somebody calls in that's got a crazy adapter, they provide us with two measurements. Boom, it goes back to the machine shop order to you. They pump it out, and it ships next day. So, I mean, we've got a pretty good setup going. We take pride to get stuff to people in a timely manner. We want, them to, we want to follow the Amazon trend of having stuff out as fast as we can. It doesn't happen all the time. And anybody out there that's listening that didn't get your product in a timely manner, I'll firsthand apologize for that. We give it 120% all day, every day, to make sure we can build all this stuff and make sure that it works, it's accommodating, and they have a great experience right out of the box. That's great stuff. Let's take a quick break here. GoHunt.com Insider is currently working hard on year-over-year -year draw odds. This will be a very nice enhancement. As you can imagine, this will include more data and allow people to find important trends. Additionally, GoHunt.com Insider will be adding guided draw for New Mexico and Nevada and will finally have Arizona draw odds, which everybody's pumped for. The Arizona draw odds will be insanely accurate. GoHunt.com Insider has worked very closely with the Arizona Game and Fish Department to get all of the data needed. This will all be live before the end of the year. If you're not already a member of GoHunt.com Insider, Go to GoHunt.com forward slash jscott to sign up and receive a $50 Kuyu gift card. I have known the owners of the Outdoorsman's in Phoenix for over 20 years. They are the authority on optics and hunting gear. Outdoorsman's is the leading designer and manufacturer of high-quality tripods, mounting accessories, and pack systems for all hunters. Their customer service is the best in the business. Go to Outdoorsmans.com or call 1-800-291-8065 and use the J. Scott promo code to receive 10% off any products. Cheston, um, for those listening, uh, y what you're saying is you can basically uh, figure out and create and mass produce an adapter for any combination of uh, binocular and phone or, or, or optical device and phone. Is that correct? And even some of the ones that are goofy, you kind of have universal adapters. Can you speak a little bit about your ability to shift and adapt to anything out there on the market? 
Yeah, you know, we've got a lot of curveballs thrown at us. We had a guy the other day that sent us in a bore scope that he used for cracking stakes, um, and he wanted to be able to attach a phone to it. Well, he sent us a bunch of measurements, sent us some pictures, and we sent it back to the machine shop, and they built a couple different ones, sent it out, and sent us pictures that worked flawlessly. We can adapt and accommodate pretty much everybody. I don't want to go out on a limb and tell everybody, but we will give it our best shot. There's a lot of stuff we've tried to make work. It didn't work, it didn't work and we didn't charge it for nothing. Because we're in the game of, of providing a quality service, and we take pride in that. At the end of the day, we don't have any customers, Jay. We have a lot of friends and family. Anybody that's willing to support us and buy from us, they're welcome to call us anytime. We'll talk to them. We want to make sure that we give them the best possible advice we can because we want them to produce the best images. We want them to be able to share with their friends and family. Look at this gear I found. Look at this coyote I've seen. I mean, we've got the video going right now with Dale Pierce that filmed that pack of coyotes taking down a mature, healthy mule deer out on Antelope Island. I mean, stuff like that is the stuff we want to see. We want to be a part of that. Uh, we, yeah. we created the product so we can, we want to share memories and moments that other people experience as well as anybody else. Um, so if there's anything any of you guys that listen has got something crazy that would love us to try to work on, Feel free to get in touch with us. We're here to, to help and see what we can do because we believe we can we can match up a phone with pretty much any type of optical device that needs to be. You know, um, speaking also about your warranty, you had touched a uh, base on it earlier, but just to be clear, um, how how precise is that warranty as far as if uh, someone's uh, uh, adapter breaks or or what have you? Uh, send it back, no questions asked, and, and they get a new one, or what is the actual warranty? Yeah, you know, we're following, I think Vortex has set a very trendy way to take care of customer service. We want every customer that we deal with to be happy, and if they have a problem with our setup whatsoever, give us a call. We'd love to try to help you fine-tune it, um, get it dialed in, and if we can't do that, we're all about refunding your money or getting you a different setup. If you have a setup that you broke, that you this or that, it's your fault, our fault, we're here to help. We want to, we want to resolve problems, but at the end of the day, we can't fix a problem if they don't know about it, too. So we take pride when customers call us in, and they start explaining to us a problem they're having, and we're like, whoa, yeah, we didn't even know that that could possibly be that way. So then we look at an alteration of the design or this or that. There's a lot of optics we physically haven't touched out there because they're old models. The new optics companies, won't, they can't send us an old model. So if something's not working right, we want to know about it. We want to be here to be able to hear about it, get it fixed, and be able to move on and make sure everybody else in the future that has a similar setup is able to have a flawless experience. I, I want to ask you a couple questions about practical use and um, have you go through. Uh, one question I have is, is your image on your uh, screen, and uh, let's talk video here, um, is it going to be the best image if you have the lowest power on your spotting scope and you zoom in on your phone? Or, or is tell me where the sweet spot is uh, for your best uh, quality image that the um, you know that you can get out of your phones. Where is the best quality? And then from there, you say, well, if you do this or do that, the image isn't quite as good, but it's zoomed in. Tell me where the sweet spot is of, of the highest quality image. So you're going to want to use the zoom on your spotting scope and not the zoom on your phone. So the zoom on the spotting scope is an actual optical zoom itself, where the zoom on your phone is a digital zoom. So it's basically cropping out what you're zooming in on. So it's just cropping it, and you're going to get a lot of pixelation, especially on low light. You're going to get a lot of noise, a lot of green. Um, so the best thing to do is to find the sweet spot of your spotting scope by using the eye relief and the zoom of your scope. So I'll tell people all the time, put your phone on, turn to the lowest zoom possible, and then twist your phone while it's on your eyepiece in and out and see if you can get a full circle. You're going to want to try to eliminate what people call the dark moon or the vignetting is, is the proper terminology. You're going to want to try to eliminate as much vignetting as possible. Once you do this, then start cranking the zoom up your, of your spotting scope until you got a full frame image. Um, a lot of times the best way to get a full frame, switch to video mode, and that way it gets rid of everything on your screen. You actually shoot the full screen. And then put your phone horizontal. You want to run it horizontal because that's how it feels for TV instead of running it in vertical. So once you can go ahead and turn your phone sideways, you get it all tuned in. Then if you need to pull your phone off and then put it back on, 
that way, you know, the, your eye relief is the correct distance, your zoom's the correct distance, and now you want to reposition the phone so you have a horizontal uh, shot. And I highly recommend putting the phone on the left-hand side because if you put it on the right-hand side of most eye, eye pieces, it's going to twist your eye cup back in because phones are heavy nowadays. So if you put it on the left side and your eye, eye relief is cranked all the way out, it's going to hit that backstop and not going to want to twist it. Okay, I, I, I want to clarify a couple things. So what you're saying is try and fight the urge to clear your vignetting by zooming in and, and, and on your actual phone. That's the last thing you want to do, right? You, you want to try yes. and do that as little as possible. Yes, as little as possible. A little bit is obviously it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt, especially if you're shooting in 4K. But our main goal is to try to eliminate as much vignetting as we possibly can by using the optic itself and getting down to the actual high quality stuff. Right, and you're saying to to have the phone horizontal. Don't shoot with the phone scope. It it will still work in the vertical mode, correct? But it's it's best even with the Samsung and the iPhone. Uh, to make sure that it's horizontal. And on yeah. the left side, you always, I know you showed me to always put it on the left side. Yeah, you know, there may be a spotting scope out there where it twists out the opposite way as ours does. But all said and done, most scopes will have the eyepiece that'll twist out. And therefore, when you hit the backstop, you put it on the left hand side. That way it can't twist back in. We don't want to twist that eye relief really back in once we got it set up where we need it. And is it true that you want the actual, well, let me back up. The way that the phone scope sits on a spotting scope, you could, the eye, eye cup will twist in and twist out. The further that it's twisted out, the worse your image. The closer that it's towards the uh, ocular side of the spotting scope, the better the image, correct? Not necessarily. It depends on the phone and the spotting scope. So that's just a critical focal distance, and each one could be possibly different. So it's all about just figuring out, okay, that's why I said put it on very first and then twist it in and out and wait until you get to the right spot. And when you say the right spot, you mean where there's no vignetting? Yes, correct. Okay, and then once you find that spot that there's no vignetting, that is kind of your home base, correct? But then at that point, doesn't the eye cup still twist? How do you get it where that's like home base, like it, that's the spot you want? Most of the time, you're going to have it to where it's all the way out. So 90% of the optics out there run where the eye relief is twisted all the way out because that's kind of what eye relief is built for. Eye relief is about the best focal point you can possibly get to. Um, so it's it's... To each their own, each is a little different, um, but it's uh, it's very critical just to play around with it and kind of get a feel. So if you get it to where it's about halfway in and your eye relief is going to twist either way, sometimes you can shim it some, t some way of uh, putting something there. And most of the time, these spotting scopes should have a tight enough eye relief that it's not going to twist. It's not going to twist back in. So very, very often do we have to fight that type of deal. And if it's a scope that doesn't have a very tight eye relief and it's kind of a lesser quality one, then it might be a proper time to run it vertical, run it up and down. Gotcha. Uh, the 4K video, now Now, tell me about RAW and uh, how much more, is, is RAW a better, a higher quality product than 4K? No, so a lot, of, a lot of stuff people shoot when they're shooting pictures and photos because you can go through and you can fine-tune the colors. You can really dial them in. I'm not much of – I don't handle a lot of that type of side of our business. Um, that's all of our graphic people that do all the stuff in RAW. I'm just – they talk about how easier it is to be able to pick an image apart and be able to clean it up and change the quality. So RAW is a very common popularity to shoot when you're shooting through an SLR. Um, and I'm sure you probably, Jay, you might even have a little more knowledge on that as I do. Um, but 4K, if you can, if you have the space on your phone, 4K is a great way to shoot video because you're able to crop the image out four times. Technically, and you're still sitting down around 1080. Um, 4K is able to, you're really able to see stuff that you shouldn't, um, but then again, you're also losing frames per second, this and that. So there's times when you should shoot in 1080, times when you shoot in 4K. 
And this may be a good time for me on one of our future podcasts to get uh, one of our graphic guys on that can kind of talk about that. For sure. Um, absolutely. Correct me if I'm wrong, though. Uh, uh, iPhones only shoot in 4K when they're horizontal, right? They do not shoot in 4K when it's vertical. Uh, no, I believe they shoot 4K no matter what. It's all just having the settings. You just okay. shoot 4K. I could be wrong. I've never, I never shoot in vertical at all, so I don't. I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things that I really like uh, with this setup is you guys have figured out the little Bluetooth adapters or the Bluetooth devices, excuse me, uh, that are your uh, start-stop on your video and, you know, the button where you can hold continuous and get continuous shots. Uh, tell the listener uh, how that works and um, what kind of burst photos and such you can use with the settings on the different cameras. Yes, we've got our own shutter button that's designed 100% for phone scoping. Nothing more, nothing less. It's it's designed solely for phone scoping. Um, So it's got, well, you hold the button down, and it's going to take as many pictures as you want until you let off. It's going to be able to start and stop your video. It's going to be able to take pictures. The key part behind it is, and the same reason why photographers use them with their big cameras, is you're not getting any shake at all. The second you put your phone on a spotting scope and you take that camera from being a normal 1X camera and turning it into a 20 power or a 60 power, a little bit of movement on the phone side is a lot of movement on the lens end where it's taking all your pictures, shooting through it. You're going to get a lot of shake and blurry photos. So our shutter button was designed and created solely for being able to take high-quality images and being able to not have to go through and delete 20 or 30 of them because you're able to actually take a solid picture and get the results that you're looking for by not getting that movement and that little bit of shape. Yeah, and the thing that I really like about it is, you know, it's it's smaller than the size of a business card as far as length, and it, it fits in your hand, and you can literally, I, I use it when I'm taking pictures of the sheep a lot, where I've got my spotting scope set up, I've got the phone, everything's on, and I'm watching the ram, and he's kind of not doing anything, but I'm waiting for him to lift his head and, like, lip curl, and I can I can be kind of farting around with my pack or whatever and kind of watching, but I have the, the um, Bluetooth in my hand, and as soon as I see him in the screen, I don't have to touch anything, so there's no vibration. I can just hold it down and it just goes pop, 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 and catches him doing this whole full lip curl, um, you know, or a, a, you know, a big mule deer buck, you know, lip curling or elk bugling. You can capture some of that stuff uh, I love that feature. Uh, I, I think you, you make a good point because I think I, I run into a lot of people that don't, they're, they're still like hitting the, the, the button when they want to click a photo. And that's like the biggest no, no you can have because you've got vibration. And originally I think you guys were using the timers in the phones, you know, like a three second delay and, and, but that shutter button is, I mean, that thing is the ticket. Yeah, shutter button is, so we did it. We was using the delay. The problem was is the animal would pick its head up and move. By the time you want to take the picture. Or there's just so many variations that would happen between then and then. So this new shutter button, it's spot on a game changer. And the cool part is, it's got rechargeable batteries that last forever. Um, our brand new model we have now has a, an LED light built inside of it. It's the new white model that we sell. Yeah. Lasts longer. It's got a quicker trigger speed. We've gone through. We've really fine-tuned a lot of things to make it really work well. To be able to accommodate what we're looking for and make things work. Yeah. Uh, it. I. I picked that up when I was there for elk season, and um, you know, I'm staring sheep season here in the face, and I'm looking forward to getting a lot of great photos with that. Uh, and that sh- that new shutter button, uh, it's, it's sweet because it's you know you charge it right there on your computer. Uh, y- y- you also uh, ha- have a charging device. Uh, are you still selling those charging devices? Yeah, so we got we so we had a company that contacted us. They wanted just to build something. Everybody's phone seems to die if it's hooked up for long periods of time and run a video. So we just we've got a little charger that virtually weighs nothing. It's good for one single charge. I, I was having a hard time with a lot of the bulky chargers that was really heavy, 
and this and that, where we just wanted something small, simple, but yet would keep somebody's phone alive, um, especially in the winter when phones get really cold and they tend to shut down because of how cold they are. If you have a little charger to jumpstart them, then you're good to go. So, right. yeah, we do yeah. have a charger. I think it's, it's under 10 bucks. Very inexpensive uh, charger that's very effective. Yeah, it, it. I love mine. Uh, use it all the time. It's great. Uh, any any other products out there, uh, Cheston, uh, on the horizon, or or any any secrets or things that you can break out here on the podcast, or what do you what do you got up your sleeve? You know, we do got something new coming out. Um, a lot. We get a lot of listeners and a lot of our uh, friends and paying customers and stuff that they give us good good ideas. Hey. Your product would be awesome at this. Your product would be awesome at that. So a lot of times we get a lot of people that tell us they would much rather see our product without that round circle hanging off that's obnoxious and in the way. So we go into the drawing board about a year and a half, and we've created something that we think is amazing and phenomenal. Uh, we're going to be releasing it here in the future, and you're the first one to know about it or hear about it, and you probably don't even know about it, so you're going to find out right now. Uh, we created a case. It's built out of carbon fiber. It's got a rubber gum shell insert. It's going to protect the phone if it drops. There's no reason to have a phone or a case on your phone anymore. This is going to be one of the toughest cases you've seen around. Carbon fiber is the new thing, and it's a new thing for a reason. It's tough and lightweight. So we've created a carbon fiber case with a rubber gum in shell. It's a shock absorbent, so you can drop your phone all you want on the corners. And this is going to take out a shock out and not hurt your phone. Um, then the cool part is that our, what we call our C2 disc. That's a disc where the optic adapter twists in and out. Our C2 disc will be able to come on and off. So when you're ready to digiscope, you simply slide it in and it locks into place. When you're done, you put the button, pull it back off. And you don't have, you can put it in your backpack, whatever. It you puts your phone in. It's going to be a flat, sleek, thin profile case. It's very tough and very lightweight. Yeah. Awesome. That, that sounds it. great. That, that sounds fantastic. Thanks for that. Uh, yeah. Let's take another quick break here. PhoneScope is a company that makes custom-molded, precisely engineered smartphone digiscoping adapters. Photographing wildlife has never been easier. It is simple to text photos and videos from your smartphone and share them with your friends. PhoneScope stands behind their product with a 100% money-back guarantee. Get yours now by using the JSCOT16 promo code and receive 10% discount on all purchases. Check them out at Phonescope, that's P-H-O-N-E-S-K-O-P-E dot com, or on Instagram, at Phonescope. Real game calls featuring the Elk Reel. Real Game Calls makes innovative, realistic, and easy-to-master calls using their proprietary, revolutionary design. They are located and manufactured in Gypsum, Colorado. Their calls were designed and battle-tested on some of the hardest-hunted terrain on Earth. Check out ElkReel.com. Use the promo code JSCOTT and receive a 20% discount on all purchases. Go to www.ElkReel.com. Justin, I know you had some elk hunts this fall. Tell me about them. Yeah, you know, I had a couple great tags. I had a Gila tag, and I'll tell you what, it was probably one of the roughest years that the Gila's experienced. It seemed like for elk this year, there's just no rut. <clears throat> Moon activity was just the, at the peak of the peak. Um, it was a pretty tough go. It was an archery hunt. My buddy Scott and I, we spent a solid two weeks down there, and uh, Hunted with a good friend of mine, Davy Matthews, as well, and it was just a tough go. We uh, we tried very hard to, to connect with some big bulls. We seen some great bulls, passed on some bulls, you know, 360 class. But I was set on finding that Gila giant, and uh, we just was it a function of up. just the elk just weren't rutting, the, the the moon was full on the 18th, and it just kind of stalemated them, or or you yeah, know, and the weather hear? was just so warm i mean the main problem we ran is we was down a couple days early and it got a good rainstorm and they out came alive and it was like sweet it's gonna get good um but the problem with hunting the heel especially where we was is i mean you've got 20 yards you can see other than that it's dark or it's just dark as it gets you know and you just can't glass it's very steep unforgiving 
Um, and if they're not running, it's just, it's not like in Utah where you can do some spot and stock. It was flat out. You got to hope they're talking good or else you're not going to have a good hunt. So, you know, I had some good 360 class bulls and it's pretty tough turning down a bull that caliber at, at 30, 40 yards. You know, I'm sitting there trying to paint on a couple of cheaters. I'm just praying, turn, I hope you got something extra on the other side. And it just didn't happen, but it wasn't a lack of effort. That's for sure. Right on. Sometimes that's the way hunts go. Um, it was definitely a weird year with that moon falling in there where it did. And, and you know, I, I've talked to a lot of guys after the rut and most everybody's reporting, you know, pretty, pretty dang warm archery season, pretty tough all the way around. Uh, then you had another hunt where you, uh, you were able to capitalize. Yeah. So I had a, uh, I had a Utah tag as well. Look, um, went out with my family a couple of times and didn't really see a whole lot of good bulls. Um, just a lot of smaller animals, and uh, they ended up having to come home one day, and I'm out there by myself, and I turned up a good bull that morning, and I watched him bed up, and I got in there about 2 o'clock, and I just had my 15s on a tripod, and I'm just picking apart the trees. I knew I was close. I knew I was in the right area, and I just couldn't find him. I sat there, and I glassed and glassed for about two hours straight, and then... I decided, you know, I'm going to hit my call. So I, I whip out a new call Jason Phelps made me just to try to see if I could just get something moving. And I ripped a couple little cow calls, and all of a sudden, boom, there he was. And he was plain as day, Jay, right in the visible plane as it got. He was just under a tree in the dark shade, which just goes to show you that that shade can hide animals. It really can. It just I didn't see him the second he stood up. I seen him, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. He was probably 400 yards, I bet, most out there. And he came in, and he got to under 200 yards, and I hammered him. So he was just a good bull, solid six, had a cheater coming off the sword. Um, really big bull, so I needed to, I had to take him. So that was that was fun. The pack out definitely was pretty rough. It took me two solid days. He was five miles round trip, but it was very steep and vertical. Um, so it took me... Well, a day and a half to get them all packed out. So I take a lot of time taking them pictures. So <laughs> especially flying solo. So yeah, you had some cool, cool pics on your Instagram. It was fun to follow that. And um, then you had, I believe, some youth deer hunts and some some different things. Maybe a muzzleloader deer hunt or something. Uh, how, how did your deer season in Utah shape up? You know, it was a pretty rough go too. We was trying to find some some good bucks and just had a hard time. My brother was able to. So I was his first buck um, this year, and it was a great time. He went Thompson Center. He's never shot a muzzleloader at Thompson Center. I got three muzzleloaders out from them, and we put them together, and the first shot, he whacked his deer, smoked him at 200 yards. It was an amazing event. You know, it's moments like that when you can share them with family. I had my little boy around along for that. Uh, he's 18, 19 months old. And to witness something, Jay, that, that my little boy was a part of, and to see how excited he was, and... It just, you know, that's what hunting's about. A lot of times, even myself, I get off on the wrong on the wrong path. But it all comes back to kind of how my dad and my grandpa and stuff raised me. You know, it's, all, it's family. It's having a good time. It's enjoying the outdoors, letting us experience uh, what these mountains have to offer. And it's just crazy because uh, it was just an awesome turning hunt. That was probably one of the hunts of my highlight this year. Is just there was my brother, and it wasn't a giant buck. You know, it was a really good buck good class buck but it wasn't nothing monstrous but my little boy was there my dad was there my brother was there you know we all shared shared that moment together so that's fantastic sounds like great times uh uh what do you have in front of you as far as hunts here for the rest of the year uh anything good coming up well you know i'm heading to colorado tomorrow with some really good friends of mine um from bat and fell technologies and we're gonna go have a good time I'm going to go chase some, some good running deer in Colorado. Colorado is one of the, the highlight trips of my year because I love being able to hunt during November. And this year should be good. The weather's not looking like we want it, but, hey, you know what? Last year I was buried in 30 inches of snow, so I really don't want the snow this year if it's going to snow like last year. Last year was rough for me. Um, so I'm heading to Colorado, and then I'm going to head to Canada here in a couple of weeks and go on some giant Saskatchewan whitetail. And then I'm going to hang everything up for the year and just get back to 100% strict business. That sounds fun. Uh, yeah, the the dates in Colorado this year with the third season, I think, starts this Saturday on the 5th. Uh, you know, 
pretty late dates. I think it goes to the 13th, and um, you know I'm expecting a lot of great bucks to hit the ground uh, th this year in Colorado, and um, it's just exciting. I've got a bunch of friends that have tags, and it'll be cool to uh, see see you guys uh, how you do on Instagram. Uh, I'm fortunate. Um, Dar and I, uh, we've got a really good buddy that has a 13B strip tag, and you know that that hunts a week later this year, and um, should be a great time. I love watching rutting mule deer. I was going to ask you um, if you had one animal uh, to hunt during the rut, what what takes the cake for you and why? You know, I'd hunt elk. I'm an elk nut. There's a reason that I spend a lot of time and money on hunting elk every year, and there's nothing better than hearing a giant animal just tearing down the forest coming towards you. If if deer would actually let out some good calls and just give you that cold chill factor and just come chasing into you, then I would probably say the mule there. But because of the, the fact that they don't, and there's nothing better than calling in a giant elk, elk hunting is, is my passion. It always will be. Um, I've never been too fortunate to hunt giant muleys during the rut, like the prime peak of the rut. So if that did do that, maybe I would I would say that was it. But hands down, there's nothing better than calling an elk with or without a tag. I just live for that. I live for September. So. Yeah, um, I was fortunate to be right there in your backyard and the beaver and drew that archery elk permit and hunted 16 days and just had an unbelievable hunt. I've told some people it was probably the best public land elk hunt I've ever, uh, I've, I've, I've ever witnessed. Uh, you know, I've, I've guided in, in Arizona for 20 years and, uh, uh, I would put the beaver unit, uh, up there with any Arizona unit and honestly, probably better as far as quality. Um, you know, so you, you live in a magical place right there. Uh, you know, Cedar city, beaver, that all that country right there. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to get to witness Utah at its finest, and I, I think I got to see that. Um, had the real fortune of, of chasing just an unbelievable bull, um, and he's he's yet to get harvested. Um, no, nobody shot him. Uh, when he does get shot, everyone will know about it, and um, he, he's a heck of a bull, and it was a incredible run to uh, be able to even witness uh, yet alone have uh, a couple opportunities at him and uh, it's just something I won't forget I've had a lot of messages people you know saying man sorry to hear about your elk hunt and my response usually is don't be sorry it was the best elk hunt I've ever been on um, public land and um, so you've got a real real jewel right there in your backyard so uh, awesome stuff I, I, I want to give you a chance uh, we talked a little bit about uh, Walmart uh, and, and phone scope being in Walmart. And of course, uh, the listeners can use the J. Scott uh, 16 promo code and go to thephonescope.com and get 10% off on all the products. Uh, but also, as well as Walmart, uh, I want to give you a chance to tell people where uh, they can also find your products. Yeah, no, so our product's available in a lot of places. Um, Sportsman's Warehouse has one of the best selections uh, anywhere in the whole USA. They've got, they stock 25, I believe, SKUs of our product, and we're putting in a whole new island. Um, it'll be in the main walkway, and it'll have stuff on the front and the back. Um, we also are in Cabela's, Shields. Pretty much any major retailer you'll find our product in. The problem is a lot of the major retailers don't carry a lot of them. A lot of the SKUs, they only carry the top selected ones. So if you're looking for a place that has a lot of selection, Sportsman's Warehouse right now is our go-to store. They've got a ton of selection there, and they should be able to accommodate you with whatever setup you technically need. Um, is there any uh, thing that the listeners, you know, as far as I don't want to create problems for you, but I mean, if they want to see certain things at their retailers, I mean, can they go bug the retailers and, and do you, do you, would you condone them saying, hey, I want you to carry this, this and this, or is it best that they just call PhoneScope, uh, you know, go to PhoneScope.com or call you guys on the telephone and, and just order directly from you? What's, what would help you out the most? You know, yeah, you can go in and let your retailers know that uh, you'd like to see this product and put your hands on it. Uh, we will be exhibiting in a lot of shows. We recommend everybody to come up and see us, shake our hand. We'd love to get to know everybody. Um, 
So there's there's a handful of places where you can see it. You can always order directly from us. Call us up on our 800 number, and we'd love to talk to everybody. Um, and if you get some great stories, I mean, if you guys out there have some great pictures and video, that's the stuff we're looking for. We're looking to make a highlight reel for the Sportsman's Warehouse uh, gift bar, throw on a DVD. We're looking to promote it and put it on the outdoor channel as our commercials. We want all the content we can get. So if any of you uh, listeners out there have some great content, we would love for you to share it with us. So contact us and find out a way to get it for us. Or keep hashtag and phone scope on Instagram, and we'll keep on resharing all you guys' stuff. Once we share it, it reshares on our Instagram feed, our Facebook feed, Twitter feed, and then we start dropping on our website as well. So it gets, it gets a lot of stuff out there. You know, one of the things I love about being involved with PhoneScope is, you know, getting to, to getting to know you and getting to talk to you. But it's it's so nice to work with companies that 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 love hunting and and you know all, all of the people that that work at PhoneScope just love hunting. They're all passionate hunters, and you know, uh, it, it's so great to see a product that that is you know worldwide for for hunters to use, but that the the you know, the owners and the founders and the CEO truly are, you know, honestly trying to do everything they can to go out and do their own hunts and hunt with their family. And, um, you know, my hat's off to you for, you know, it, it's a multi-million dollar business that you're, you know, out there still hunting away, but you're also trying to get back and, you know, make sure you get, get everything taken care of on the business front. So kudos to you for, creating such a great product and, and being so, uh, you know, well-rounded and have such a great business mind. Um, just, just been great working with you guys and, um, really appreciate the sponsorship. No, Jay, that means a lot. And uh, I love hearing it coming from somebody like yourself. And, you know, it's funny. I was backpacked in, I was able to hunt two days on the archery deer hunt. And I think I was texting you up there cause I told you I seen some bulls rot and then I pull out my laptop. We're, we're backpacked in probably five miles. And I pull out my laptop because I know I can't, where I camp, I know I had LTE and I'm over there cranking away doing emails and the guy's sitting there laughing. He says, are you really working right now? I says, dude, you don't understand. I have to, I can't let anybody down. You know, I take pride in making sure that we can get stuff handled and I love to hunt, but also right now there's a lot of people that are ordering stuff that rely on us to deliver because they want to hunt it. So there comes a fine line when we've got to set our hunting aside and take care of them or we have to take care of their needs while we're hunting. So it's been definitely something to, to get used to. I've been used to being able to just take off the entire hunt whenever I wanted and just not have to worry about this type of stuff. So, you know, I, I appreciate the uh, the good words because a lot of work goes into making sure that everybody is, is handled and getting their products so they can hunt. That's great stuff. Well, I'm expecting uh, good things from you in Colorado and, and up there in Canada. And I'd love to see you kill a big old uh, white-tailed deer and, and uh, hope you don't freeze your butt off too much. It's usually pretty bitter cold up there, but, you know, oh, sometimes yeah. those hunts are better when they're bitter cold. So, um, you know, suit up and, uh, yeah, I'll be anxious to see your pictures on Instagram and, uh, uh, yeah, I want to give you a chance to let the listeners know, I, I believe phonescope.com, but also, you know, tell, tell them your social media channels. Yeah. So visit us on all of our social channels. We got a big page on Facebook. Um, it's going to be phonescope.com slash Facebook, Instagram, our username is just phonescope and, uh, keep your eye out. We're going to do a lot of cool things. We've got a couple of hunts we're going to give away. But this upcoming year, it's going to total over $20,000. We're going to do a lot of fun things this year. We want to give back to all of our friends that are uh, that are using our products. We want, to, we want to give back to all you guys. So keep your eye open. Keep helping us grow. We appreciate it. We really do. We take pride in, in working locally, and we take pride in working with everybody. It's great to work with. You guys are all amazing. Um, any problems or any suggestions, any ideas, anything you guys have, we would love to be a part of it, help out any way we can and uh, give back for, uh, for where we're at right now. We, we really are grateful and appreciate everybody's support and love. All right, buddy. Sounds good. Well, God bless you. Travel safe and uh, have fun up there in Colorado, okay? Sounds great, Jay. Appreciate it once again. All right. Take care, buddy.
Guys, thanks for listening and supporting my podcast. If you would, please go on iTunes and leave me a comment and leave me a five-star rating. That helps our placement on iTunes. If you'd like to send me an email, you can at jscottoutdoors at gmail.com. You can also follow along our adventures at jscottoutdoors.com, also on Instagram or Facebook. I'd like to thank my sponsors for supporting this podcast, GoHunt.com Insider, PhoneScope, The Outdoorsman's, and Real Game Calls.